So here we are at Blog Her with yes. one of the stars of the conference so far. Don't so. start talking stars and A-list because I get in big trouble. That's right. so. so who are you? I'm Hallie Suit. And you blog at? Well, lots of places, but primarily Hallie's Comment. And also for TomPeters.com and Worthwhile Magazine and Personal Democracy Forum on politics and uh, Joey Ito's blog, We Quit Drinking. <laughs> the list is longer. A Gamer Mom is one that I created that's about playing video games with my son. Um, what else? I'm going to launch a new one soon, actually. Uh, because I don't have anything else to do, right? Business and blog or personal? Also, on, these are... Hallie's comment is personal, and most of the rest are business-related. Um, and then also, I just joined Metro Blogging for Boston. Um, Sean uh, Bonner, Bonner's sites, all the Metro sites, you know, he has that are really cool, because I wanted to do more Boston blogging, so. Okay. A lot of blogs. So, you were at the first, you were speaking at the first session this right. morning. Right. Um, and it was interesting to see how the conversation took off and the, the audience basically took over the panel. They and, did, and the which I, so. well, I want to hear what you thought, but I thought it was great. I <laughs> well, think I was that wondering was what your reaction was and what, what do you think, what, what, did you got, what did you get out of that? I think that um, one of the first things I noticed this morning was, and, and this is perhaps, you know, we are the antichrist of male conferences and having been a conference organizer, um, I welcome it, which is that was a room of so much expertise. And Lisa Stone, the organizer of the conference, knew that and wanted to leverage that. And I thought she did a really good job. Now, if I was feeling kind of alpha male about it, I would have gone and, you know, ripped the mic out of her hand and said, forget it. I want to hear me. But I didn't because I was learning things from everybody talking. And... Um, I think the whole sense of it being collaborative and that would be the best leverage was obvious. What I instantly thought was, I don't think I've ever been to a conference where the monkey mucks up stage, you know, up front on the stage were uh, heard from so little and the people in the audience heard from so much, but I would challenge that the word audience didn't even apply anyway. I thought that it was... Uh, collection of expertise that needed to be leveraged and she yeah. did a really good job doing that yes. but it also made me think we could this is a one-day conference we need three days to really do a good job of hearing all these people because uh, even in our event where many people spoke in the audience and not the two folks me and Charlene Lee from Forrester Research up on on stage I could think it could have gone on another hour that one alone, and then we had many events that were back-to-back -back, uh, sessions where you had to pick, and it was very hard to pick between uh, different bloggers and uh, all these different women speaking. It, the whole this this idea, oh, there are not enough women bloggers out there known and 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 promoted. It was like it's a complete like in a flood of women bloggers here today so you you certainly i think we disabuse ourselves of the notion there weren't a lot of women bloggers out there there's just so many and doing so many interesting things and very many that are not talking about being women are talking about municipal wi-fi and talking about many many other things so that was really interesting and what is the significance of um of a women's blog conference you know what 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 does it mean for all these folks to be coming together and, and as a group like this and outnumbering the men four to one well first you know they did convert the men's room to a women's room yeah, that was you gotta love that yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, that first was, thing i noticed this is the first thing and you know what was funny i mean i think most people still kept going in the women's room we're like who needs it but anyway that was funny the significance for sure is that old standard situation with any mentor that it's very good as you're learning to do something to see someone else who can do it and does, has done it and can tell you, sometimes I think not even necessarily tell you do it the way I did it, but simply to exist as someone who did it is extremely helpful. So you can look at them and say, she did it, why can't I do it? And it gives a level of assurance and confidence and permission I hate to think anybody needs permission to blog at all, but permission to have a career and to, 
to follow a kind of um, still a pretty radical path to blog. It's still new to so many people. I'm, I feel like I've been here forever and it's old, but um, a lot of people find it an uncharted territory and want to see how you do it. And many women want to know that. Other women have done it. And it, it delivers a real sense of confidence, I think. And the dream for me gives me ideas about how people have solved problems in this sphere that I didn't know and I didn't have time to ask. And the problems we have are going to be different from what male bloggers have in terms of promoting ourselves and uh, everything about it. It is different. Very different, I think. There are a lot of novice bloggers here, so uh, for people who weren't able to attend the conference, what advice would you give to somebody who's just starting out with a blog? What should they be doing? I've got lots of advice I've talked about before of simple facts that work, and I've learned from other bloggers, both men and women, that, for instance, write a lot of pieces every day. And I think write shorter pieces. The more times, you, I always call it like baking fresh bread and putting it out for sale. You're like in this little word bakery and you're making these words and then they come an hour later and here's the new fresh words here and then all the RSS aggregators are letting the smell of fresh bread go out across the net to say, oh, Hallie just baked something new and you put another new thing. So I think that part, it has two functions. It gives you more traffic because people go and, oh, there's something new and people always want something new. Also, if you do something stupid, by seven posts down, it's already below the level of, you know, the fold in your blog. Nobody's going to read it anyway. Or later, if you like, which I, I don't tend to do unless it's something pretty radical, you can just delete it and nobody notices that it went away. So that kind of frequency and kind of building your chops and just throwing stuff out there, I think is one of the best things for starting a blog. Don't take yourself so seriously, in other words. So that alone, um, I would say, if you're starting, do that. Just blog often, blog as much as you can. Read other people's blogs. I can't believe how many people, people will set up a meeting when they're at lunch, and I will have just written so many details about what's going on. I recently went rollerblading and fell on my butt and hurt my coccyx, right? And believe me, I sit down to lunch with people, and one person's read that and knows, and says, oh, do you want to sit on that hard chair? Would you rather sit on the bench? I appreciate it. And... Another person is like supposedly so interested in talking to me, doesn't even bother to read what I wrote. It's a little, you know, okay, maybe I'm like an egomaniac about it, but it's a common courtesy. I do it too. I wouldn't, I really don't like to go anywhere and meet with another blogger if I haven't read what they're up to. And it, how much time does it take? It doesn't take a lot of time. So I think that's, you know, please read everybody, read other people. Also, you should take days where all you do is read other people and post about them. You know, enough about us. You know, we could actually have days where you're telling everything about other people. It's a good way to know people. It's, I, I would also say if they're not coming to conferences, go to conferences. And if you, if it's financial and the travel's the issue, only go to conferences in your town. You'd have to live in a pretty remote town not to be at least an hour or two near some city where some event is going on. Right. And last question about the, the A-list thing. Most, most of the A-listers I've met uh, Glenn Reynolds and Doc Searles, they all right. just hate the idea of the A-list in the first place. Yes. So what what do you have to say about that? Um, I would tell Doc and Glenn they should get off the list and let me be in their slot. <laughs> that would be my recommendation. And, you know, we're sick of them anyway. They're men. Okay. They're boring. No. Okay. okay. Can I re a little rewind on that one? I went with, when I was with Doc in Paris, I found something out. Can I tell a secret about Doc? Yeah that he works his ass off to meet with a lot of people that are his readers, to make himself available to people, to blog all the time, to post a million pictures, to do so much hard work. Does he deserve to be where he is on the list? Uh, yeah. And that's the other thing. I have been on Oprah, and I remember when I first met her, thinking, this is nightmarish, <laughs> how much work she does. <laughs> and you think, oh, she's the most wealthy woman in the world, and oh, she's so famous. Well, she works her butt off, and so I think there's a real direct correlation. So I don't begrudge anybody their status on any of the lists. The people on the list have invented the tools that we use. Hats off to them. They have, they work nonstop. They, I met, I know exactly when I met Glenn Reynolds, 
at a, um, the blog, uh, Blogger Conference, BloggerCon, in uh, Cambridge, Mass. A bunch of us are at a table drinking after the day, and he's at the bar blogging. And I'm like, man, <laughs> you're like too much. It's <laughs> way too serious. It's too serious, but he's like, I got to get this down. And it <laughs> is. They have a real seriousness of purpose, and yeah. they deserve what they get. I have not really met... And I met a lot of famous people. I've not met many famous people who were famous by accident. They tend to be famous because they work their asses off. Crazy me. <laughs> I think that's what happens. And they are where they are for every good reason of staying up late and getting up early and traveling. And I mean, Doc, for instance, goes to so many events and is so generous with his time with so many people. Why would he not have enormous traffic? Because just the people that he's met in a given day, if they all came and took a peek at his blog, he would have, he is A-list for that reason. He deserves to be that. So my question was not so much about the A-listers who are there already, but um, people just shouldn't obsess about getting on these kind of artificial uh, lists, but they should also, if they want to, um, if they want to become better known, if they want their everybody to read and love their blogs, right. they, need, they need to get serious about it and, and spend some time, devote some resources, right. work their asses right. off. Right, work their asses off. If they're really complaining, they've got already too much time. <laughs> they should <Yes>. be blogging, <laughs> and that would improve their rank, right? And if they're, I, I did argue this morning that being fixated on your rank is totally silly. Right. You should be pushing the medium in many new and different ways. You should invent new tools for us. Do what they did. They worked hard and they invented things and they changed the blogosphere radically. And so if you're going to do that, do that and then get back to me and complain, okay? Work really hard at that for a while and then complain. Because by the time you get around to complaining, if you work really hard, you're already on some list. And so you don't need to complain. So I would say that would be my notion. Now, do women need to be on the list? Yeah. But I think there's time, and someone mentioned this in the uh, event. It's time for some new lists. I want to read not only the top 100 blogs by traffic, I want to read the top 100 women's blogs. I want to read the top 100 blogs written in Spanish. I want to read the top 100 blogs involved with law or legal copyright. All, I want some partition results that will help me find, if all it should be, it shouldn't be about status, it should be about help me find the things that I like to read about. And then that's a good reason to give me a list. That was always, I think that was the intention in the beginning. When there were just a thousand blogs in like the year 2000, and now they're 10 million. All they were trying to do is say, these are ones that many people read. It can be as simple as that. It doesn't, there's no, you know, conspiracy to say you're out and we're in. People may run with that notion, but I don't think that was ever the intention. So. Okay. Thank you, Henry. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs>